just rub my body on your screen. <laughs> no, I turned down the exposure. You were just like, oh, he's so pretty. I could just pet him. The exposure was, it's trying to go back up on me. Hey, y'all, welcome back to my channel. Hi! <laughs> I'm back by popular demand. <laughs> So as you can tell, Binksy is feeling better. I updated you guys on my community tab, but Binksy is feeling better. Thank you for your prayers. My baby is doing good. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I do mobile home living in a trailer park in Tennessee, and we are on our way to make our mobile home a mobile mansion. One corner of the trailer at a time. Today, we're back in the living room. <laughs> but it's kind of the kitchen. We live in the living room. Because <laughs> it's kind of the kitchen because... We are going to be making my island that's in the middle of our kitchen. Into we're a going, Ferris wheel. We're not making it into a Ferris wheel. <laughs> into a merry-go-round. We're not making it into a merry-go-round. We're making it into an L-style island. I need more counter space. I don't know if you guys are familiar. You guys are definitely familiar <laughs> with my kitchen. I have very little counter space. Like I'm talking like this bit, this much right here. Like this is oh, how yeah. much, much I have to work on. It's like yeah, this. Literally see it behind you, Maria. No, and you're going, it's this much. This is, I need more counter space. <laughs> this is all the way on the opposite side of the sink. Like I need something right here next to the stove that I can work on. So we're going to be making our island an L shape, making it all farmhouse, making it all aesthetic for my home, which has really no aesthetic at all, but it kind of does. We're just doing that today. It's kind of going to be like making a half wall, so we have to frame it out, do all the things that we kind of did for the fireplace here when we built it. It's going to look pretty. I have high hopes. So let's get on it, doggone it. Get the daggone thing done. Look at you using my catchphrases. <laughs> okay, let's go. You gotta use my, wait, what's one of my catchphrases? Oh, I don't know, Tater Nation, hashtag Tater Nation. Yeah. As you can see back here, I really need to put my mind to doing the less fun things like baseboard. Somebody tell me to do that in the comments. Like, get on me really hard about it. Ride my tail about it so that I actually get it done. Otherwise, it's just not fun. Baseboard's not fun for nobody. But I need to do it because it would definitely improve that area and that area. And the trim would improve that area. So get on me. Say, Marina, do the daggone thing. Take your own advice. Do the daggone thing. I'm also going to be doing a TikTok with this. So I'm going to be filming not only on the camera, but on the phone here. So this will be interesting. It's the first time I've ever done that. Don't rush or nothing, Shane. We're just waiting on you. So Shane's going to start off by building the frame. He's going to go cut the pieces. But we're going to take these big old long screws right here. And we're going to screw the frame, the bottom plank of the frame, into the floor. You guys will see what I'm talking about in a minute. We're basically just building a frame with 2x4s and then a support 2x4 in the middle. So that when we put the countertop that we're making on top, that it won't buckle. You know what I mean? And it won't easily fall either. It's going to also be attached to both sides of the walls so that it's sturdy. Like, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you all ever seen a triangle? <laughs> Come on, you didn't you mess around too much. This kid is done. I don't everything you say I can't put it here, so you know I can't use that. Oh, but you can't. Uh. So this was one of the easiest projects we have ever done, and I can't tell if it's because we're getting better at this or or what, but really the most taxing part about this project was the measurements. You do have to be really, really, really like accurate when it comes to the measuring part but other than that it really wasn't hard and we even like made this up in our minds there was no diagram we followed or anything we just took a bunch of measurements i told shane what i wanted and he was like okay we're gonna need this piece of wood this piece of wood we went to lowe's it did take three lowe's trips but don't all projects take three lowe's trips <laughs> so these two by fours came from idaho and y'all know that up in here we're all about the hashtag tater nation Meaning that these pieces of wood here are 100% genuine taters. <laughs> genuine. You can sell that at the flea market for a dollar fifty. Yeah, I'll sell it with my <laughs> snake water. I'm getting kind of hungry. 41. Don't start. <laughs> Don't start. Don't start. Don't start. You got on your nose. What is it? You got something black all over your nose. <laughs> you no? You just put more. <laughs> oh my gosh, what do I got on my nose? 
what it, it's not dookie though. Yeah, I don't know, it might be. Oh, it's back here, it's the candle stuff. <laughs> Between Shane's flea market genuine two by four taters and my, my charred nose, it's a wonder that we got anything done. But we did get the frame put up pretty quickly. The hardest part about the frame was making sure we got it tight enough to squeeze in this little space, but not tight enough to where it wouldn't fit. So we had to do a lot of hammering, a lot of wiggling, but you really want, and we felt this out when we did the big fireplace insert wall, whenever you're doing frames, you really want them snug, like snug as a bug in a rug. Is that referring to bed bugs? Which, whatever like you want them snug so that they'll fit and they'll have some support also when you go to drill them into the side walls like we're about to if it's super snug you can get the screws in there better and the more snug it is the more supported it is okay 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 okay, okay. first oh this is big okay first let's seriously say a prayer in the words of mel gibson in the patriot lord make me fast and accurate fast and accurate <laughs> This is the part of the entire project that made me grit my teeth. Like, I had the Hershey squirts, and I go, <laughs> this was so scary to me because that's a permanent part. Our trailer came like that. We literally took a permanent part of the trailer off. So, it, it, it scared me, but <laughs> we ended up pulling it off. It was just super scary, y'all. Like, what if it hadn't worked? We would have had a, a short end of the island, and it would have been a mess. Check it out. You ready? Yeah. One, two. Yes. And then here it comes. <laughs> the way that that middle two by four is slanted, I just knew when he sat on that, it was going to come down. He says it doesn't matter. I think it matters, but whatever. I trust him because, hey, he sat on it and it, it was fine. So Colt here got in on the action. He usually doesn't even want to be around us when we're doing DIYs. He, it's just something, not something he's into. But he actually wanted to help this time. So we were all for it. And Shane was teaching him like how to drill in screws and stuff. And it, he had a blast with it, which was surprising because usually he could care less what he don't, he doesn't care what we're working on. The countertop was interesting. We had to find lumber that was thick enough to match our countertop that came with the trailer so that was a little bit tricky but we ended up finding some at Lowe's it just wasn't wide enough so we kind of just stuck them together and then made sure we supported them from the bottom so we have three planks here they're nine inch long well the, they're originally nine inches long but we had to cut one of them so like we have a smaller piece up front and then a smaller piece in the back we made sure we supported them from the bottom and that's how we put the countertop up you can't really tell after I do this wood filler right here I hate wood filler y'all but this wood filler works really good because I did this not only on the screw holes but where like between each plank and then at the seam where we attached the new countertop to the old countertop and it went seamless after I let this dry for a couple of hours I sanded it I'll be honest I always say I hate using this stuff but I think it's just where I didn't know how to use it at first I don't think I still don't think I know how to use it <laughs> but I found out the trick is you pat it in first and then you scrape I never did that before so it never came out right but this time I really made sure like you can see here I'm patting it into the crease and then I'm kind of spreading it out so that it's even the top of it's even and then I went in heavy with a sander and I went with a deep grit sand I think it was like 80 and 80 grit sand uh, sand paper block thing sand sponge sander sponge I went in with one of those and it it sanded it really well I also sanded the edges just to make sure there were no rough edges which y'all usually I hate sanding too but I did it this time so I got all the wood glue and all the areas I got that seam filled in all the screw holes filled in. I've got to wait for this to dry. I think it dries within like two hours. Shane just went to get dinner because we have been working on this. There's just no time to cook. Because I don't want this project to take up all weekend. But it just might. I don't know yet. There's a lot of different things that I've, we've got to do. So while he's at Arby's, I'm going to wait for this to dry so that I can sand it. This is the sanding thing that I got. I don't know if you're... I've never done this. I hate wood glue. So I don't know if I'm supposed to sand with this or what. I'm, I'm going to try it and I'll probably go lighter hand on it and then, you know, go heavier if I need to. So far, it's looking good, y'all. I didn't really go heavy handed with the sander block, but I didn't really go light handed either. I just kind of 
with middle pressure like went over the top of it when I got to the edges and I needed to round off the edges and round off that corner I went a little bit heavier on the hand um, and it did really good the 80 grit did really good at rounding the edges so now like they're not so pokey not so sharp so if somebody accidentally does hit themselves with it it's not gonna be like a blunt you know point that hits them running into a corner is gonna hurt either way but it'll hurt less if it's not such a blunt poke corner you know what I mean <laughs> while I'm sanding down the wood filler I'm also going to get these edges real good sand down these edges so they're kind of rounded and they won't hurt the kiddos if they run up here thankfully this corner is covered so like that corner couldn't hurt anybody but this corner can so I'm going to kind of round it off so there's no like harsh corners I'm not really good with the sander Put the other one, I'll get this off. When it came to time to do the front of the island, I knew what I wanted. I really wanted the farmhouse X's. I really wanted that, but I didn't know what I was going to put behind it. We felt this stuff. This was about the cheapest stuff we could find at Lowe's to put behind it. It is super cheap, but it works. And when it's stained, it's really pretty. The grain is really pretty on it. what you do to get it to focus on stuff <laughs> because it is so flimsy because it was the cheapest stuff at Lowe's um I we didn't really have a whole lot to nail it to with our nail guns so we went in with the liquid nails too that way it had double the support and then we also whenever we went on to frame it out and put the x's on the front of it we used liquid nails and the nail gun too that way it's just double the support and we know it's going to stay there the liquid nails itself it wouldn't be going nowhere <laughs> with liquid nails on the back of it but we added these uh, little nails from the nail gun for like extra enforcement well, see right here there's a gap there so that we couldn't use those shelvings to put like it up against and shoot nails into so i told shane shane was going to do something more complicated I told him he should just lay it put it down like it's going to sleep taking a nap and then that way we can attach it to the two by fours versus just going around the edges shane and i were talking i was like my friends are going to be so mad <laughs> that i'm getting rid of these shelves but honestly i told you guys a long time ago i don't want to put anything on them because the more i put on them the more it just felt cluttered in my house so what i'm going to do is because i don't want to minimize all the storage what i'm going to do is i'm covering this side up but on the other side i'm going to use that as storage space because i do need storage in this little single wide i need a lot of it so i don't want to just minimize it completely so on the other side side I'm going to be using it for storage and I'll show you guys in a future video how I do that the snowstorm I say snowstorm but y'all in the north will laugh at our little snowstorms here in Tennessee but uh, the snowstorm had hit so we couldn't go outside so yes we used our couch as a horsey and, and we sawed off it we saw we sawed off everything in this house we used I think those are one by threes to frame out the farm X's uh i went through and sanded this stuff because it wasn't the best of quality and shane had gotten a major splinter while putting this up i mean you're talking like a bleed out splinter so i didn't want that to happen again so i went through and sanded it with the same 80 grit sand thing that i was using on the countertop i sanded it real good as good as i could honestly you can see there's a seam to the left if we could do this project over there's one thing i would change and that was making that seam that you see right there underneath my hand right there i was making that in the middle we should have put it in the middle but we didn't think we didn't think that you know in the middle is where that middle one by three would be and it would hide that seam and i also didn't want to put the wood glue or the wood filler on it because the wood filler you can tell a difference you can tell a difference it doesn't stain like the other wood stains so you'll see here in a minute once i put the stain on it it would be super prominent if i had used the wood filler i am using the jacobian I hope I'm saying that right. Jacobian 
stain on this. I usually call it Jaco Bean, but I didn't know that it had a lot to do with some heritage. And a lot of you guys were telling me about it in the comments. And I never want to disregard someone's heritage, someone's history. So I'm going to try to say Jacobian from now on. Um, but if I ever do get another dog or another child, I love the name Jaco Bean now. So I'll, I'll definitely name them that still. And I'm still a Jaco Bean girl. It's just it, I'm going to try my hardest, my darndest to pronounce it the proper way because I would never want to offend anybody's history ever. So I'm using this Jacobian stain, which is my absolute favorite. You can see there, once I put the stain on it, that seam, it got way more prominent. My fear was that if I put the wood filler on top of that, it would get even worse. So I don't really know what to do with it. Once I, once we put the X on there, it kind of hides it, but it, it doesn't really. I mean, in, in certain lights, you can't see it at all, but in certain lights, you can. So I don't really know what to do. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know. I don't want to ruin it completely, so I'm careful on what to try I don't want to just try anything on it I used the paintbrush method for the stain this time usually I do it with a rag but I wanted it a richer deeper color like you know I love my my Jacobian I like it really really dark almost like the um, ebony stain so like I really wanted it dark but when I go here in a minute to stain the X's I noticed that they got lost in the brown so I was like you know what I'm going to use the rag on them I'm going to do it with I'm going to paint the stain on with the paintbrush and then wipe it off with a rag just to make the X's lighter so that it gives it some dimension eventually I would like to change my countertops like these big tall countertops up here all together um, with butcher block but it's gonna be really hard I'm gonna have to have them like custom made because I don't think we could do that around the pillars I would have it would take some research to try to figure out what in the world I could do if I need to cut around the pillars or if I could take the pillars off and lay new countertop so that's a whole project like I'm gonna have to get a whole degree <laughs> to figure out how to do that but that's the eventual eventual goal and like I said here we put on the X I did you have Shane use liquid nails and the nail gun and then I stained them and then wiped them so that they would be lighter than the background and they would stand out. On the X's, I also used the wood filler and I just patted it in and then scraped it off because I really wanted the X's themselves to have that seamless look. I didn't use wood filler all around the frame of the front of this island, but I really wanted to do a good job on the X's. This year, I have made the decision to be like more accurate and intentional when it comes to my DIYs and stuff. Like I really want to put in 150% because if I'm doing all this work to make my home look beautiful in my opinion you know in the style that I like then I should be doing 150% I shouldn't be cutting corners I shouldn't be leaving out trim or anything like that because if I'm going to make it look good it's going to look its best when it's completely done so that's kind of a new year's resolution I've picked up and I didn't even really set my mind to it at the beginning of this year I didn't sit down and say okay I'm going to do this it was just by me doing a DIY and I was like you know what I'm not cutting corners anymore like yeah I don't want to do trim who wants to do trim but it needs to get done like I don't want to do dishes who wants to do dishes but it needs to get done so it's going to get done so that kind of mindset is not only overflowing through my DIYs and my makeovers but also my homemaking I've told you guys like laundry I don't like doing laundry laundry I hate it but it needs to get done so it's getting done and I, I like that mindset now it, it it, it's almost like I talked myself out of not wanting to do it. <laughs> so over here, we needed to put a piece of trim. We just got a piece of trim out of the trim section in Lowe's, and we put it on either side to top it off. Like I said, I probably would not have done this step in the past. In 2021, I probably would not have done this step or had Shane help me do this step. But this year, I really wanted to make sure all my T's were crossed and all my I's were dotted. So we did that, and I stained those. I got these, I got these from Ollie's. 
these were i think they were in overstock because they were significantly marked down they don't have the backs like my ones right here from hobby lobby but i was going to paint both of these black but then i put this color this brown color against the uh island and i was like no that's going to clash like crazy so i took my black spray paint back to lowe's and i got a silver kind of metallic because I put this up against the island and it looked really good. It didn't clash. I like this worn out look. Um, it's very, I don't know, it's not really rustic. It's just like farmhouse, right? So I love the way that that looks. Thankfully, this color right here is about this color right here. So I'm going to try to tape off the areas on these that are brown on these so that I can kind of put them together and they'll kind of flow. They look great like they are right now. But like I said, those against the, uh, the island it just doesn't look really good and i tried putting these because i thought maybe i could put these on this side of the island once i get done with it because i'm about to start on it when i get done with these chairs um but still it would look it would look off to me these have high backs and if i put those here the high backs kind of take away from the island i don't want to take away from the island i want to you know kind of just accessorize it i guess you could say so i'm going to tape these parts off and then get to spray painting because it's about to come a snowstorm another snowstorm in Tennessee here in a little bit and I want to get out there before it starts freezing rain because I, I ain't about to do this in the freezing rain so this was day two of the snowstorm it had already started snowing and sleeting the night prior and now it's 32 degrees and I'm out here in a t-shirt in a Jesus Saves t-shirt <laughs> a vol orange t-shirt but a t-shirt nonetheless and usually i don't get cold because i'm very well insulated but y'all my teeth were chattering i was like come on the wind was high you can see the wind blowing the spray paint like only half the spray paint got on the chairs it took me two coats i woke up the next day because i was so tired after doing this i like literally passed out in the bed i woke up the next day and there was literally a coat of silver paint on my glasses on my camera lens on that side of the porch <laughs> It was everywhere, and it's because the wind was blowing it. So I was out there freezing my honey off, but we got it done. I let it cure for, gosh, I'd say, I think 30, 36 to 48 hours. I let it cure. I let it cure all weekend, basically. And then I went in with the sander you'll see at the end of this video. I just put a quick clip in of me, like, sanding around the edges just to, like, you know, not it basically looked like I had just put tape around the top of it. So I sanded it to soften that area and stuff. But these came out so close to the other ones. They look, at, look at the birds up there, y'all. <laughs> the birds have my energy. <laughs> you see them? <laughs> okay, so you see those? That was what I was going for over here. I gotta wait till they dry and cure a little bit more. And then I'll sand these edges right here to kind of round them off. Um, and like this edge right here to round it off. But while that's curing, I'm going to start on this wall over here. And what I'm doing to this wall is I'm going to sheetrock it. Well, <laughs> half chain sheetrock it. I'm going to half chain sheetrock it. And then I'm going to do my brick method. Now, I thought maybe with the brick, you see back there, my exposure, I, my lights are wanting to do some weird things to my exposure. Um, you see the bricks back there, like right there? I thought that might be too much, but I don't know if I'm going to keep that brick right there. Um, because, because I'm not a really a fan of cottage core. Cottage core, is that what it's called? I don't know, cottage stuff. Cottage I'm not really, cheese. I'm not really, not cottage cheese. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not really a fan of that. And I feel like that over there, especially when you add greenery to it, like right there, it gives off a cottage vibe. Mm -hmm. So I may do something different with the brick over there. But regardless, I really want to tie this island into my living room. Because you guys know that's one of my favorite parts of my house. And then back there is also one of my favorite parts of my house. I really want to tie that all together. And I think that that would be a nice accent piece there. I do like a lot of texture in my house. Y'all know I like the wood. I like the wood. But I don't want it to be too busy. But I feel like that would be just busy enough. In my opinion. I may do it and I might not like it. But I have a feeling I'm really going to like it. I have a feeling that if I didn't do this, I would wish that I had of. So I'm going to do it and try it. If I don't like it, I can always change it. It's not easy because, you know, it is textured. You can see there, like, it's super textured. Yeah, look at my hands. <laughs> but I can either re-sheetrock it, but if I do that, it won't be anytime soon because I want to build, well, I want me and Shane, Shane and I, to build new cabinets. So that would be, like, when we did that. 
but I already like with my countertop you see there how busy it is I like it but I don't like it and I think it's it's not even up here that I don't like it's down here it's down here that I don't like because it does have just that cottagey feel and I really want a butcher block countertop so if I did that it would really look cottagey to me so I don't know if I'll keep that or not if this does end up looking like too much compared to that then that will go sometimes so I'm not I won't be too mad about it it's just liking this in general I hope I do I think I will I think I will this part was a little tricky because we decided just to put the drywall on top of that already wall that wall that was already there but we had to cut around the corbels I think they're called corbels it was a little tricky but Shane made it work Okay, so over here is the back side of the island. This is the side that I'll stand at the most while doing everything. So we're gonna sheetrock this and just leave it plain so that it'll kind of flow with like my sheetrock back through here. Like I said, let me know what you guys think in regards to the brick on this side. Will it be too much? Um, I think it will, honestly. I really want the, ac the brick to be accent. Like, I want all the brick pieces to be accent pieces, right? That's an accent piece. The back of the hallway is an accent piece. The front of the island is going to be an accent piece. This feels like it's no longer an accent piece. You know what I mean? Like this feels like, I don't, I don't really know. So I'm thinking with me going more minimalistic with my decor, as you can see over there, like I'm definitely more minimal than I used to be with decor. I don't have the want nor the need to like fill up just random spaces in my home. I'm happier this way so I'm thinking I'm gonna clear this off which will be a cool thing for you guys who have done this because then you can see me try all kinds of different methods on how to remove this in the future um, if I'm gonna do large areas which I, I doubt I will but if I could go back I would definitely do it on contact paper so that I can just pull the contact paper off that's what I almost did in the first place but I decided against it if I ever go back to do any more brick like big pieces that can't be easily changed out then uh, I'll definitely do it on contact paper so I can just peel the contact paper off if I ever get tired of it but as for this we're going if if I decide if I decide that I don't want it on here no more and I want to go a more simpler route so that I can go with different countertops because this is the peel and stick this is this is a uh, contact paper these are contact paper countertops and I really want to change them already with the brick it looks way too busy but I want to go a lighter route. This I like these, but I really want to go a lighter route. I've been going with more of uh, whites, grays, and blacks than a lot of browns. So if if I go another route, like kind of like this, but lighter with con with countertop, it's going to really clash against that brick. So I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to do with it. But if I decide to to take it off then you guys will get to see it. different ways that I will try because I don't know exactly how I'm gonna get off right now <laughs> I mean I could have Shane re sheetrock the whole thing but that like that's not realistic that's not affordable for everybody so like I don't want to do that he is massively good at sheetrocking though I've said it before but if you guys don't know he used to do this for a living he literally worked for Clayton's which is the leading mobile home people in all of the US so he and he partic in particular did drywall so he knows what he's doing in that department but i don't want to drywall all this again it's been years and years and years since he worked at clayton's but he still remembers how to do the drywall which is good because we're forever getting holes in our drywall over here while it's snowing i'm going to put some encanto soundtrack on the tv and yeah! i'm going to <laughs> And I want to get to bricking. Okay, the bricks. I get a tons of questions. One of my most asked questions, my most asked question is what color are my walls? And they are Stone Harbor Grays by Color Place. You get it from Walmart. The second most asked question is how do you do the brick? So I have tons of videos that go in depth on how I do my brick. I am the laziest bricker you will ever meet. <laughs> I don't have like a... I don't have measurements. I don't do none of that. None of that. I literally just go through with the thin scotch tape. You can get thick scotch tape, scotch tape or thin scotch tape. I always go with the thin scotch tape. And I just put it in long lines across the surface I'm bricking. 
look at the snow. <laughs> then, I don't know why I put this clip there. <laughs> I interrupted myself. And then I just make my bricks anywhere from like five to six inches long. And I put pieces in between, the pieces of the tape in between. Then I go in with joint compound. One of my friends on here told me one day, she was like, Marina, why don't you just use your hand? You get it all over your hands anyway. And I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. <laughs> I hope you're not being sarcastic because I'm about to do that. <laughs> so I just use my hand and I just put joint compound all over the surface. That's how you get your texture, your brick texture. It's all about the joint compound. The trick, the secret is to use a paper towel while the joint compound is still wet. Use a paper towel and go in with your acrylic paint. I use Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel. You just dip it into your paint and then you don't smear. You tap, 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 tap. See how I'm tapping there? And you get a whole lot in there, put it in a spot that is kind of sparse and then work around it. See how I'm working around and around it? I'm making it lighter. That's the trick to it, to stiple. Is that what's called? Stiple not not smear and then you wait until it's semi dry you peel off the tape you always want to wait for if it to be semi dry not completely dry because it is a pain in the rear end to take off the tape <laughs> trust you me i know it's a pain in the rear end to take off the tape while it's dry so you, you want to wait till see how it's kind of floppy in my hands right there it's semi dry now if you're not doing this on a white surface ideally i would have painted this before I done the breaking, but I got ahead of myself. So I'm gonna go back in with white paint once this is completely dry, and I'm going to get the grout areas. You see the air areas where the tape was? I'm gonna go through with a paintbrush like here and messily get the grout areas, and then I'm going to just quickly white wash the bricks. Usually I just pull the paint from the grout lines onto the bricks themselves and you can see here I've heavily whitewashed it and then I decided that I'm going to use just the thin trim that was already there when we bought the house I took it off to do the floors and never put it back on so I just got some to match that and we trimmed up that area real quick it took no time I don't know why I've always been so afraid of trim so we got the trim on down there y'all Usually I don't put trim on my projects because I hate trim, but I made a resolution, another resolution, <laughs> one of many resolutions that I was going to do better about trimming off and finishing up my projects. I'll tell you, trim makes the world different. And then up here, we are caulking. See how you've got like the cracks right there? We're caulking that up. See how seamless that is to kind of finish it off. I real quick just sanded around those areas you can see there it kind of just softens up the area I didn't want to do too much to it but y'all I'm so excited for you to see these afters my house looks so much bigger my kitchen looks bigger what do you see it ready oh y'all y'all oh my gosh it it does something like I don't know it, it looks beautiful to me now. I can't even I can't even tell you how much I love it. This is my most. I know a lot of people won't like it because I covered up the end caps, but I will tell you this confidently. This is my most favorite thing I have done to my home thus far, and that is been up against the fireplace wall. I'm talking up against all of it. Like this is my most favorite thing I have done to my home thus far. Y'all, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I got four seats around, spaced to where they can be eating snacks while mama's in here baking, cause I wanna do more of that. I don't do a lot of that now, but I wanna do more of that. They can be sitting here coloring while I'm doing things. They can just spend time around the island. I want them to have memories of spending time around mama, like sitting around and talking to me, sitting around and watching me do whatever I'm doing, me teaching them baking while they're sitting here, just whatever, I want them to have those memories also I've talked to quite a few people well when I say quite a few like four <laughs> but and they said that it actually even makes the kitchen look bigger and I have to agree I thought closing that space off would take away from the kitchen which my kitchen is relatively large anyway it's one of the biggest kitchens in any single wild I've ever seen but it didn't it actually gave it some like I don't know not only did it give it character it separated the kitchen from the living room which is what I really wanted I love open concepts so I didn't want at first I was gonna 
take that wall down right there but I love open concepts so I didn't want to close in the living room I wanted to kind of still let it be open concept but still kind of break it off and show that distinct line where the living room ends and the kitchen begins and I feel like I really did that with this bar not only do we always need seating areas if somebody comes over we definitely need more seating areas because before we only had the two there at the bar and then the table and chairs back there but not only do we have a distinct line of where the living room ends and the kitchen begins we also have another end of the bar it adds a beautiful unique it adds a beautiful unique touch uh to the very custom like touch to the kitchen i love it now do i think that the brick on the face of it is a little much with that brick over there where my where's my hand right there yeah yeah i do does it look bad no it don't look bad um but is it is it a little much yeah it is i was already thinking about switching up maybe not even taking the brick away uh, from that wall in the beginning but I've been very open about not really being 100% like at first when I do things you know I love anything I do at first I'm like oh yeah but there's very few projects I really like so much that I don't change a few projects for example would be my hallway my hallway hasn't changed because I absolutely love the way that it came out my fireplace I absolutely love it my entryway i absolutely love the way that the entryway came out i have had to change a few things but it's not because i wanted to just change the way that it looks because it needed to be done like things messed up it needed to be fixed so say areas like that i i don't touch if i'm happy with it i was happy with this wall at first but then as it time went on i was like okay you know i really don't like the vibe i hate that with the atmosphere no i don't like the look of my kitchen wall right there um, so I'm going to do something different to it. It won't be anytime soon. I'll have to start an envelope for it and I'll have to save for it. I haven't even started an envelope for it, so it'll be a while. But regardless, I'm going to change that up a little bit. I'd like to really put our skills to the test, my mind and Shane's carpentry skills, and see if maybe we could build custom-made cabinets uh i think shane could i think shane could no problem so we may do that i may start saving i'll actually start an envelope for that this week i'll start it up and get to saving on it i thought this was going to be a small diy it was not it took several days it took three days two and a half three days to get this done so it wasn't simple but it was pretty fun shane and i had a blast doing a majority of it some of it was a little bit stressful we even went as far as to caulk and put the trim on who are we i will say trim makes the world of difference i will never finish a project without putting trim on it first from now on because it makes that big of a difference there are some areas around the island here in a video coming up within the next week or two i'll be doing a video where i touch up areas of my home that need to be touched up or do things that never got done like the trim there and this hole in the wall things like that that would take away from this island i'm gonna get that done but y'all i love it those chairs they came out so well i love it i really do i love it if you live in a trailer and if you want something done do not let the fact that you live in a trailer stop you from getting the daggone thing done if you want it done you can do it you can do it shane and i a year ago had zero skills barely knew how to hammer a nail into wood i'm not even exaggerating so if you don't think that you're missing out on anything if you live in a mobile home or if you live in a smaller home whatever it is you can make it your own i am living proof of that right now this channel is proof of that even if you rent there are so many things you can do to upgrade your space of living that don't have to change the actual foundation of the building if you live in an apartment and you like the brick method do it on contact paper you can remove contact paper when you leave or if you like if you want to build an island in your apartment look on the facebook marketplace look on at thrift stores look anywhere for like a dresser and turn a dresser into an island there's so many things you can do you can even build an island and not attach it to the floor so many things you can do to upgrade the space you're living in regardless of if you rent if you live in a mobile home and you own it you're renting a mobile home you live in an apartment or whatever it is whatever, a big old house one of them big old mad daddy houses <laughs> if you, whatever it is you can make the space yours and it it just takes time to learn how to do things um, um, 
Shane and I have learned by trial and error, but listen, if when once you start, you pick up some really good skills, skills that'll take you a long way in your DIY journey. So have fun with it. Turn the space into whatever you want to turn it into, regardless of what uh, you think stopping you. The only thing stopping you is your own mind. You can do things, you can fix things around your home. Even if you're on a Dollar Tree budget, look at look on YouTube. YouTube has tons of Dollar Tree things you can do for a fraction of the cost and they end up looking like Hobby Lobby stuff. It's insane. I love you guys. I hope you have a blessed morning, even not whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus, he loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later. See y'all in the next one.